Today, my ugly face decided to come out. They made us keep our drinks in these lockers that had a gnat infestation. Like my bowel movements are not bowel movementing. What's up, Cameron crew? Qu quiet on set. Quiet on set. Lights, Cameron, action. I got my pajama pants on, I'm caffeinated, I got my Stanley ready, let's get it guys. It's 9.47 and I, my stomach hurts so bad, like my bowel movements are not bowel movementing. The way I just suffered on the toilet 15 minutes before I started recording is actually concerning, but what's up you guys, welcome back to Lights, Camera, and Action, I'm your director Cameron and we're back for another episode. I don't know if you're watching the video version, but on my nightstand right here on my desk is my Stanley. Now, this isn't a Grammy. This isn't a Nobel Peace Prize. It is a cup, simply a cup that I use to refresh myself throughout the day. It keeps my water cold, all right? There have been videos circling around on the internet of these 40-year-old Karens and all other beings and creatures tussling in targets over these Stanley Cups. What are we doing? What are we doing, you guys? It's a cup, it's a cup. And you can buy it online. Why? Like, the way I saw this girl on my For You page camping out for a Stanley, this is not an Ariana Grande meet and greet. This is a cup. You will never catch me camping out for a cup. I'm sorry. That is absurd. And it's winter time. Get inside. I saw videos of Karens, like, tussling with their bobs. <laughs> trying to get these Stanley Cups and like they're like taking them by the handfuls and the Target employees are scared because everyone's getting hostile over the Stanleys. I like it. It's a good cup, okay? I feel like I'm carrying around Thor's hammer all day and I like the way it fits in my hand, but I'm not gonna gouge out somebody's eyes for it. Honestly, I'm not gonna pretend like I don't eat it up every time. Like I'm loving this era, honestly. I'm loving seeing the Karens fighting again because we haven't gotten that since like 2012. Back in the old days, when <laughs> back back in my time, meh, whenever they would do um, Black Friday and Black Friday was like actually Black Friday. Like when they <laughs> would let the cages up and all the moms would be clawing at each other. Ugh. Miss it, miss it so much. I miss the old Black Friday and these Stanley Cups, they're bringing it back. They're bringing it back and I'm sat. I asked you guys on my Instagram story to do a little q and I wanted to answer some of y'all's questions because I love a good Q&A and I didn't know what else to talk about. What is the best job you've had so far? The best job I've had so far is honestly the current one I'm working at right now, which is I work front desk at a hotel. So I'm like checking in, sir checking out it's that easy like it's really chill i love it um my past jobs i was a waiter at cracker barrel when i turned 16 because girl i needed a job and i wanted spending money i worked there for three weeks and then left because it was a disgusting place i literally hated it with my entire being um cracker barrel was awful the uniforms they made us wear made me feel like a pilgrim it made me feel like i was serving old people in the 1930s it was awful and all the old people were mean to me <laughs> and then i worked at panera toxic work environment the managers were awful. They deserved nothing good. It was gross. What do you mean I couldn't drink water until my break? What do you mean I had to keep my drink in the lockers that were infested with gnats? True story. They made us keep our drinks in these lockers that had a gnat infestation and they would never take care of it. It was actually gross. Like I would go over to the lockers and I was like, I'd rather be dehydrated. I'd rather be dehydrated than drink gnat eggs. I'm going to slurp up water with a side of gnats. Like, no, thank you. I was a photographer. And it doesn't sound as luxurious as it sounds. Trust me, I was working at this shitty portrait studio. I was good at it and I was comfortable there. I worked there for three years. Talk about commitment. I found out the girl I was training, training, was making double what I was. I was getting so screwed over. My hair looks awful right now, sorry. I look so bad today. Um, sorry if you're watching the video version. I don't mean to traumatize you like that, but today my ugly face decided to come out. I know that's not just me. Some days my ugly face just pops up. I don't understand the signs behind it. Like one day I'm looking at myself and I'm like, wow, I'm the hottest, baddest bitch in the world. The next day I'm like, oh, the ugly face is back. He's back. Get a blindfold. Don't want you to lose an eye from looking at this. Like he makes an appearance here and there. And today he decided to come out and show face. Long story long, my job I work at now is my favorite job I've had so far. If you had to eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Probably sushi. I'm gonna say sushi because I love sushi. I could mix it up any type of way I want. I could do tuna rice. I could do 
um, spicy salmon with a bit of, you know, spicy mayo on it. If you don't like sushi, we can't be friends. We can't be friends. Sushi is the only thing I bond with people over. Like, what do you mean you don't like sushi? It's too much for you. Grow the fuck up. Grow up. Grow up challenge. You're failing. If you don't like sushi, grow the fuck up. Grow up. Same with lactose intolerant people. What do you mean? Oh, my stomach hurts. My tummy hurts. Pop an Advil. God, I hate not being able to enjoy the simple pleasures of life with people. If you don't like sushi, hey, it's rice and salmon. It's like that simple. Like you can put whatever you want in it. You don't have to get the most extravagant thing. It's like sandwiches. You try one sandwich. Are you going to say, oh, I don't like all the sandwiches in the world? No. You're a picky eater and the only thing you like to eat is chicken nuggets. Sorry, that struck a chord with me. What is your take on relationships in high school versus college? Um, high school relationships fail 99.9% .9 of the time and it's one of the reasons I haven't gotten in a high school relationship. Also, I was ugly as fuck. I feel like high school relationships, you always see that high school couple that like everyone's like, oh my God, they're gonna get married. They're gonna spend the rest of their life together. Hey, one of them cheats. One of them always cheats. It always happens. I've seen it time and time again. Trust, you will be dealt with. <laughs> But college relationships, I feel like, are a bit more serious because you're kind of out in the real world. You're meeting a lot of new people that you're not used to knowing. It's not like everyone in your college class has already dated each other because, like, you're new there. But in high school, it's like, oh, like, you've grown up with these people for the past 12 years and, like, they've all probably dated each other, if you know what I mean. So I think, like, college is, like, kind of a fresh start and everyone's more mature in college. So I think the relationships are kind of more stable and more real because you both have had more life experience. This is coming from someone, by the way, who has never been in a relationship in their life. So take that with a grain of salt. I'm trying here, y'all, I'm trying. What do you think is the first thing people notice about you? Um, probably my bird beak nose. My fucking third leg on my face. Okay, maybe that's just my in insecurity stalking, but like a lot of people say they notice my eyes. Like I turn to the side and they have to like dodge it. Like <laughs> I'm working on it. I can't wait to get a nose job. One of my New Year's resolutions, nose job, 2024. Like I want them to get a hammer and just clunk it, <laughs> clunk it. Cause I have like a big bridge on my nose. Like I, I don't allow people to see my side profile because that will expose what my nose really looks like. We can't have that. We can't have that now. Every time I get on here, I'm so gassy. I need to be burped like a baby. F Mary kill the last three people you texted. <laughs> the last three people I texted. My best friend Sasha, my best friend Mac, and my work group chat. So immediately we're killing off my work group chat. Bye bye. F Mac marry Sasha because Sasha is like a long distance friendship. So I'm gonna have to marry her. But like I see Mac like every day. So like I'm gonna have to F her. Next question. That question was weird. Oh my God. I felt uncomfortable saying that, but you know what I mean? What do you do on your self care days? I actually love this question. So on my self care days, I love to sit down on the shower floor and cry. I'm being so serious too. And listen to sad music and make me feel like I'm in a movie. I love sitting on the shower floor with the hot water running over my legs and Billie Eilish or Ariana Grande sad songs playing in my ear. I love that. And then I might maybe go in my room, light a candle, get a little snacky snack. And I like to read. I love to read as well. I read two books in one week and I'm already on my third. So good, I'm rereading the Hunger Games series. And in the morning on my self-care days, I love to get a workout in. This morning, I just ran three miles, three whole miles. Did it take me an hour? Yeah, but I ran it and I felt great after. I felt exhilarated and energized the rest of the day. So basically on my self-care days, I like to exercise in the morning, um, maybe clean a bit too. God, my life needs cleaning up. And I like to watch YouTube, read a bit, and take a nice relaxing shower, maybe do a facial, do my skincare, do an everything shower. That's like my my actual self-care. Maybe also journal, because self-care isn't just, you know, a face mask. Self-care is also taking care of yourself, taking care of your body, like working out, like doing your laundry, you stink rat. Um, sorry, I just came for you so hard. Sorry, yeah, I know your laundry is piled up to your ceiling, babe. Take care of it. <sighs> Next, what are my 2024 New Year's resolutions? How much time do you have? I have so many resolutions this year and this is my first episode of 2024. I think, I think so. Don't quote me on that. 
I'm not sure. But if it is, these are my New Year's resolutions. Every year I have the same New Year's resolutions. It's like make X amount of money, do this, do that, travel. I wanted to get a bit deeper. Cut my life into pieces. This is my last resort. Suffocation, uh, no breathe. Sorry, that's my emo side taking over. Point the finger, pull the trigger, throw them off your trail. You'll get yours eventually. <laughs> Does anybody get that Gabby Hanna reference? No? Okay, it's just me. Oh, okay. My first New Year's resolution is to have more self-confidence, which isn't just like surface level confidence. That's probably where your mind went to. He wants to make himself believe that his bird beak nose isn't a bird beak. Well, it is. And I can't change that for now until I get money and then I'm going to look like Bella Hadid. But for now, um, that sound is so Southern. <laughs> But for now, um, what I mean by self-confidence is believing in myself more. Like I want to truly, to my inner core, to the fiber of my being, believe in myself, in my goals, believe in myself as a person, believe in myself that I can do all the things I want to do in life and believe myself that I am talented and I am creative and I am funny and that I can apply myself and I can be consistent and disciplined and I can do all of this. Because I think a lot of my self-doubt isn't even from looks anymore. God, it used to be. But now it's more, I want to have more confidence on an internal level. So that's what I'm working on. Um, I don't know if I'm doing that through journaling, maybe intensive therapy. My next resolution is saving more money. Because you know how like the little things add up? I did go spend $20 on a salad today. And I shouldn't have done that, okay? The $7 coffees, hey, those add up. Yeah, $7 a day, seven times 30. Don't ask me, girl, I don't know, but I know it's a lot. 30, 60, 90, what, $200 a month? That $200 a month could go to anything else, like gas money, you know? So I think it's like little things like that I should be like saving up for and not, and just like not splurging as much. I don't have to buy myself something new every week. Like, yes, it feels good. Retail therapy works. Oh, by the way, I just paid off my third ticket of 2023. Bitch, three tickets in one year? What am I doing wrong? Genuinely, me as a working citizen of society in America. What am I doing wrong? Why did I get three tickets in one year? Okay, the first one, I was speeding, but I was going 15 over. Is it a crime whenever I'm blasting my favorite song and I can't control how fast my foot lays on the gas pedal? If Ariana Grande is playing, I'm throwing it back. I'm throwing it back in the car and my foot is going 100 miles per hour. I can't help that. Then I did a rolling stop at a stop sign. I didn't come to a complete stop after I was getting off of work at midnight and you know I want to get home. We have a stop sign at the end of our parking lot at work and all I did was a rolling stop, okay? It was midnight. No one was on the road. I was ready to get home and get my ass in bed and take a hot shower. And I had to stay late. I was supposed to get off at 11, but I ended up getting off at 12. I go to the stop sign, I look both ways, and there was no one there because it's midnight and no one's on the road. So I did a rolling stop. I still slowed down, like hella slowed down, but I didn't, my car, my wheels physically didn't freeze. He didn't even give it three seconds. Like the tail end of my car was probably still beside the stop sign whenever I heard Boop, boop. And I saw flashing behind me and I was like, oh, that can't be for me. I didn't do anything wrong. There's no way that's for me. And I had to pay $80 on the ticket. Then I got my third ticket for apparently not paying the parking garage fee, which I thought the parking garage was free because the thing went up and it let me leave. So I was like, it's free. Nothing in life is free. I had to pay $100. Three tickets in 2023. Feeling great about that. Didn't help my saving money era. Aside from that, my next goal is to be more consistent in the gym. Which, let me just say, I am consistent in the gym. But I always feel like I could be doing more because I go like four days a week. Could I be going six? Maybe. I would like to see more results. So I guess consistency isn't the right word. I just want to make progress. And that leads me to my next goal, which is progress in 2024, which means progress physically, progress financially, progress me moving into my new apartment. I plan on moving to my apartment in the spring. I've been talking about this the past 15 episodes. Wake up. I am ready to get my independence. I'm so sick of my mom knocking on my door and being like, did you do your laundry? Get your laundry out of the dryer. 
Where are you going? Why are you going to the grocery store? It's 5 p.m. Hey, I'm 21. I would like to have some independence. So that's why I'm so excited to get my own apartment and live on my own. And I think it will build me up as a person. And I would like to have that independence because I am pretty independent as is. But at the same time, it's like I know I'm still codependent financially and um, responsibility wise off my parents. So I really want to get my own apartment. I've been saving up. I'm almost to my goal. And trust, I will be talking about living alone in one podcast episode because I've never lived alone before. So this is new to me. And hell no, I was not about to get a roommate. I do not want a roommate. I don't want to live with anyone else. Like, I don't know where you've been. I don't know if you're a slob, even if you're like my best friend. Like, I'm like, I know you when we go hang out together. I know you when I go over to your house, but I don't know you. I don't know how you live. In most of my friends' rooms, you can't even see the floor because their rooms are so messy. So I'm like, I don't even want to imagine what the kitchen would look like. And I'm like very particular of my space. I want the decor to be exactly how I want it to be. So no, I'm living by myself. That is a must. I'm willing to hustle a little bit harder and spend the extra money on an apartment by myself because I want my own little cave to go back to. Is that a crime? No. So I'm doing it. And I'm really excited. I like am wanting to film like a whole apartment tour and everything because I have the decor in my mind. I want a bunch of like disco themed posters everywhere. I want like white a white marble coffee table i want a shag rug i want little fake palm trees everywhere and greenery over the shower head i literally have a whole pinterest board dedicated to what i want my apartment to look like it's going to look so amazing i can't wait but yeah i will also talk about what it's like living alone because i'm low-key scared i'm scared i'm still scared of the dark what do you mean you want to live alone if i go downstairs to get a little midnight snack like a little sweet treat at three in the morning i'm like oh, it's the witching hour i have to turn on the light on the stair hallway before the demon gets me i'm like i have three seconds to turn on the light before i get snatched and dragged down the stairs by mr demon i'll tell you what living alone is like and my last and final goal as of now i'm still working on some goals but one of them is to read more books which i've already been doing like i said i read two books in one week i didn't even know i knew how to read like this is great i just love burying myself in a good book i've been rereading the hunger Games series and i really want to read like a lot more so if you have any good fantasy or dystopian or like enemies to lovers book recommendations let me know in the comments cameron crew because I really want to start reading more. Like, I love reading. Like, I feel like whenever I was forced to do it in school, I hated it. But I already went over this in my last episode. But, like, I love reading now. It's, like, literally an escape. It's like watching a movie, except you get to picture it in your head. The best part is, is, like, it really is, like, you tune out the rest of the world. And it's still entertainment, but you're not looking up at your phone. Oh, let me write that in my New Year's resolutions. I want to stop being on my phone as much. Because my screen time is fucking disgusting. Why was my screen time on TikTok 14 hours? Am I even awake for 14 hours a day? I was like, that has to be a glitch because there's no way. I'm like, oh, why do I feel like shit? Why am I so tired? Maybe it's because I've been staring at a screen all day mindlessly like a zombie, like The Walking Dead. Like I am fully convinced I feel like shit constantly because I am on my phone 24 seven, like in unhealthy amount. I could spend that time in so many different ways. And I'm like, why does my brain feel like it's rotting? And my attention span is awful as well. I feel like TikTok has just ruined our generation's attention span. It's awful. I could go into a whole episode on that though. But yeah, I definitely want to get off my phone less because I could be, I could just be spending my time so much more wisely. And life is fun. Life, I want to experience it myself instead of viewing others experiencing it. And I think that's the last goal I have for now, but like I just thought of a new one on the spot. So maybe I'll think of more. This part of the episode, I really want to talk about the Hunger Games and how I think it is so good. It's one of the best pieces of entertainment that has been released in our generation. It is so amazing. I think it's so interesting how Katniss is a fighter forced to perform while Lucy Gray in the prequel is a performer forced to fight. Oh, I was gagged. I was like, that is so true. So it's so interesting to see how Lucy Gray kind of naturally turns it on, but she struggles in the arena. While Katniss, she, she, yes, she has some struggle in the arena, but not compared to others. Like she kind of kills it in the arena while whenever she's like getting interviewed, she's awkward and kind of like shy and reserved. And she doesn't know how to get the people to like her while Lucy Gray naturally charms everyone. Um, but she can't fight at all. So it's like really interesting. And also seeing how Coriolanus, sorry, I'm nerding out right now. You're just gonna have to deal with it. 
seeing how Coriolan is snow, you see him get to that point in the movies where he goes from being this capital boy who um, is just trying to provide for his family and get them to keep up with the capital elitism. And he's struggling. And he's just trying to get that that uh, plinth prize in order to move his family up in the ranks in the capital. But it goes from that to an obsession of greed and power and him having to choose between love and having a free life running away with Lucy Gray or climbing up that capital ladder and willing to sacrifice simple things for power. And he never wants to go back to that starving boy he was growing up during the war and everything. So it's just like so interesting. And seeing how he like, sorry, spoiler alert, if you haven't watched it, click off. Just seeing the way like he screws over his best friend to Janus because he knows that will get him out of being a peacekeeper and that'll get him on Dr. Gall's good side. Oh my god, it is just so well done. Like, it's so well done. It's not done in, like, a cliche way of, like, oh, my whole family was murdered and now I'm wanting to bomb everyone. It's not like that. It's You see him start to slowly make different choices throughout the movie that are snake-like in order to get him further ahead and get him more power and money and... It's just so good. And like, it almost makes you sympathize with him a little. It's like to the point where it puts yourself in his shoes and you think, oh, I probably would have done, done that too if I were in his shoes. So it's just like so interesting. If you haven't watched it, you need to watch it. If you don't like The Hunger Games, hey, you don't have taste. You don't have taste. It was my favorite movie in middle school. I remember I used to have an Instagram page which was like my main Instagram, but I was always posting Hunger Games stuff on it. And one time I went to school and this girl was like, oh yeah, aren't you the dude that, that's obsessed with Hunger Games? And I was like, I'm not obsessed. And she was like, yeah, you are. I was like, what makes you say that? I was so offended. And she was like, well, you have like five posts about the Hunger Games. And I was like, yeah, like Instagram, you post stuff you like. Like there was more Hunger Games pictures than there was like pictures of myself. But now that I'm older and they released the prequel, I'm like, it's unlocked something in May. I went on my three, on my three mile run this morning. I literally went and climbed a tree because I was like, hey, I'm Katniss. I can do that. If she can do it, I can do it. I honestly would love another prequel as well because I think it was so interesting seeing what happened between the 10th annual Hunger Games and the 74th. And I think we got Coriolanus' story. You know whose story I would really love to dive into? Haymitch's. Because in the Hunger Games movies, he's like this tortured victor who is um, scarred by the game so much that it has driven him to alcoholism because that's how he copes with the PTSD of the games. But now I want to see what happened to him in the games and how the games affected him and how he won and what he did to survive and how and what his character was like before the games versus what made him turn into the drunk mess he is now. Like, I want to see more of what led to the 74th Hunger Games because I don't think it would be too much. I think there's just so many different stories you can tell with the Hunger Games and it wouldn't be too much. And yeah, okay. Hunger Games rant over. God, I know you were so sick of me talking about it. I get, I get so excited over it. Like, I just, not enough of my friends watch it like I do. I watch it religiously. I feel like I could recite the script of the first Hunger Games movie. It's so good. But Catching Fire is the best. And if you don't think so, like I said, you don't have taste. Do y'all remember Divergent? Divergent was, the first movie was good. It tried to be what the Hunger Games was, but it couldn't. It had potential, but it was just so bad, especially the last movie. Apparently they were <laughs> supposed to make like a, a part two to the last movie. Like it was Divergent, Insurgent, Allegiant, and then Ascendant. But it, Allegiant flopped so bad because the movie was honestly horrible. And it flopped so bad that they never ended up making the last movie. Womp womp. It was so bad. I hated the movie. And then Maze Runner. Maze Runner was so good. I still haven't watched the last movie though, but I need to. I just feel like entertainment today, it's not what it was back then. Like I miss the whole dystopian YA storylines. They don't do those anymore. All that's happening now is like remakes and stuff. And it's not as fun as it used to be. Like movies were way better in the 2010s. I feel like the 2010s, even with music and everything, it was like the best. I feel like the TikTokification of everything and this trying to turn out content as fast as possible and get as much money as possible has kind of ruined storytelling. And it's ruined the creativity of Hollywood that once was. And I'm really hoping that changes. I don't know how, I don't know who's gonna change it, but I hope it changes and I hope we bring that back. Anything else in 2024 that I want to achieve or do, 
oh, I want to get in a relationship. That'd be cool, but that's not in the cards for me because I feel like I have so much I need to work on myself that like ugh, being in a relationship sounds exhausting. I like being alone too much. Honestly, no, I don't want to be in a relationship because I love being alone. I love not having to rely on anyone else. I love being able to go back to my cave, my room, and just hibernate by myself. I don't want to get asked what I'm up to, where I'm at, why are you dressing like that, blah, blah, blah. Like, I want to be able to just chill and not have the burden that I'm getting cheated on. I want to be able to hang out by myself and not have to dedicate time to anyone else. Like, I just love being single too much to where I'm like, maybe I don't want to be in a relationship. Maybe later in life, but for now, for 2024, I don't think I want a relationship because I need to get myself together. I need to get my money up. I need to get my career up. I need to get myself together. And maybe once I'm established and once I have a career and once I have my money together and I'm rich, then I might get into a relationship. We'll see. And if you have any goals of 2024, please comment them below, Cameron Crew. I really want to know what your goals are. And I'm, maybe you can give me some ideas because I feel like I could have a bigger list. And I've made a conscious effort to work on those every single day this year. And so far I've been doing pretty good, but I got to keep it up. I got to stay consistent. And I got to stay disciplined. What I've been doing to keep myself motivated though, because I feel like it's the hardest part is staying motivated because you get tired, you get overwhelmed, you get stressed, you get confused and you don't know what direction to go in. First thing is to get organized. If you're not organized, you're going to be so overwhelmed. I learned that recently and it is so true. Like yesterday, I was having a whole, like I, have, I was having so much anxiety. I couldn't sleep because I have a billion things I need to do, but I was not organized. And as soon as I woke up this morning, I got organized and I knew exactly what I needed to do and when, and I got it all done and it worked out perfectly. And now I feel weight off my shoulders. I just kept moving and I got it done and just getting organized will help you stay focused and aligned with what you need to do, but also to stay motivated though and to stay inspired. Not to be cringe and hustle culture like, but it's so true. Like motivation comes and goes, but discipline is what makes you successful and what like stays. You can't rely on motivation. Motivation changes every day. Your motivation, like one day you'll be so motivated and think you can pull a tree out of the ground. And then the next day you're so unmotivated, but discipline is what gets you progress and what gets you forward. The more disciplined you are, the further you're gonna get. Cause no one feels like doing hard things constantly. I think what separates successful people from non-successful people and people who chase their dreams is People you see chasing their dreams, they are pushing through even when they don't feel like it, even when they don't feel good about themselves, even when they don't, they feel tired, they don't, they feel under the weather, they feel, you know, all of that. They force themselves to do it. And that's what I'm trying to do this year is I'm trying to build my discipline and force myself through those valleys. Cause there's always peaks and valleys with motivation. And like, I want to be able to push through those valleys whenever I feel unmotivated, uninspired. But what I've been doing to feel more inspired. Every night before I go to bed, I look at my Pinterest board I made of my future life that I want and it's so inspiring. Like it's so detailed too. I'm like, what would I be seeing through the lens of my future self if I were to be successful? And that kind of makes me motivated and puts a fire under me to get things done. Cause I'm like, I want this life so bad. I want it, like, I want it so bad, but like, I'm the only one that's gonna get myself there. I don't know if that helped anyone, but I hope it did. I hope that gets you motivated in some way, shape or form. Get on Pinterest, look up your dream life. If you wanna be a painter, look up painter aesthetic. If you wanna be a photographer, look up photographer aesthetic, successful photographer and put a board together and it'll be like, dang, like I want this so bad. Like I swear, do it. It's so fun too. It just like makes you feel good. Me and you, we're gonna take 2024 by storm. And I'm so excited for it. Get ready for it, camera crew. We're taking 2024 20, by storm. We're gonna achieve great things in 2024. We've got this. If you're listening to this on Spotify, rate it five stars. If you're watching this on YouTube, camera crew, comment your goals and your resolutions and things you want to happen for you in 2024. And I think they will happen. You've got this. I believe in you. And yeah, thanks so much for watching, camera crew. I'll see you guys next time.